Now, I'm sure by now most of my viewers have noticed that I pretty much use nothing but port cable power tools, or at least the battery-operated power tools that I have are pretty much all port cable and there is a good reason for that. I myself have had really good luck with their line of tools, and I really put them through a beating, and I would say I use them way more than the average home user would ever use any of their tools, and I'm probably rougher than most people out there with my tools, and they just seem to last and last and last. Now, I'm not saying that they're any better. Uh, in fact, I'm sure they're not any better than the higher grade tools out there on the market, and in fact, I would say most of the bigger companies out there that sell the more expensive tools make a better drill than Porta Cable. But I will say, for the price you pay for these drills, they absolutely will take a beating and keep on ticking. No offense to Timex at all. They're just a really good tool. Now, this particular drill I have had with me over the years, and I, I don't know if it's seven, eight years old, somewhere in that ballpark, and I have used the same battery with all these tools. It actually was a kit that came with two of these batteries, and, and both batteries have lasted and lasted. However, last, I want to say last Christmas time, it started to show its age, and over the last summer, it just doesn't last anymore. The drill is still good. It's beat up, and it's tethered, and it's worn, but the drill is still good. It just needed batteries. Now, Santa was good to me this year and purchased me a couple of batteries. Now, this is not the Porta Cable brand. It is actually an aftermarket brand. However, this is one company that does make good batteries, and the reason for that is it's not the case that matters. It matters a little bit. It needs to snap into the drill, but it's the batteries that are inside that matter. Now, I'm not going to take this battery apart to show you what batteries are inside, but I do have a sample battery, and these are what's inside. So they look like a double A, but they're actually a lot bigger than a double A. And they're typically labeled on them. If we can get this thing to focus, it is a 18650 battery. Pretty common battery. Pretty much this battery is what is found in all of your laptops and all of your power tools. Now, one thing I want to talk about is this particular battery. Now, look at the brand. It is Garbriel or Garby. I have no idea how you want to say that. It's more like garbage. That's probably what the G-A-R-B at the beginning is supposed to say. The reason I say it's garbage is you can read on it. It says 5,000 milliamp hours. And the truth on this is there are no batteries this size that is that big. It's just physically not possible uh, today to make a battery this size. It's 5,000 milliamp hours. So right off the bat, there's some false advertising going on on the wrap. Secondly, what brand is that? I have no idea. It does say made in China on the side. I'm not going to say China makes bad things. I will say in this industry, Japan seems to be the leader of these particular batteries. But I purchased them because they were a buck and a quarter a pop, and I thought they might give me 2,000 milliamp hours. And filling this particular case up with some decent batteries that hold 2000 milliamp hours it might make a fairly decent drill battery so we're going to try it not that i need them because as i said santa provided me with two really good batteries but i just want to see if we can do it now i believe panasonic has a 3600 milliamp hour battery and quite honestly i think that's the largest battery in the industry right now so if you're buying batteries and you see something over 3600 milliamp it's probably simply not true there's a lot of false advertisement in the battery world sadly and there's a lot of people making stuff that just isn't isn't up to par and believe me this is one of those batteries now you can see in here there are five of these batteries, and these look like they're no brand, but if you read on the side, these are actually Samsung batteries, and Samsung makes really good batteries. Now these are all soldered in, and I also want to point out something else here that most people probably won't think about when they order these batteries. They make these in two different flavors, or two different kinds, and they make them with solder tabs on both sides. They're basically flat on both sides, or they make them like this, which they call button top. And these generally go into flashlights, just like a double A or a triple A would, and that's why there's a little bump contact on the front. It rides up against a contact inside the flashlight, and then there's some type of spring mechanism that you tighten up on the back side. These batteries are designed Designed to be soldered or in this case they're welded in and you can see they're like spot welded in four spots we're actually going to solder them in place and charge them and see if we can reuse this battery case with some maybe better batteries now we're going to be as gentle as we can and try to reach under here with a screwdriver and see if we can either tear or pop these tabs off and it looks like they're on there really good and you also want to be careful not to damage the battery itself. You don't want air getting into the plates because these batteries are known to explode and catch fire and have other problems. And Lord knows the wife will be mad if we catch the garage on fire. Now in the battery world, bigger is not always better. In fact, if it's heavier, 
that is better. At least that's how these seem to be. The heavier the battery, eh, the more capacity they seem to have. And this is a really good battery. As I said before, it's a Samsung, and if we weigh it, you're going to see that it is 1.5 ounces. Now, if we weigh this cheaper knockoff battery that absolutely will not give you 5,000 milliamp hours, you're going to see it weighs 1.3 ounces. So it weighs less than a really good battery, and that's another sign that it is not going to deliver anything near what this battery could deliver. Now it's pretty important when you put these batteries back in that you get the polarity correct. I actually labeled the top of these bus bars appropriately with plus and minus. Now I've mangled these up getting them off the battery, so just take a pair of cutters and just snip them off and use wire as tabbing wire. Now the first thing that I like to do is I like to put a little solder on the top of the battery and the bottom of the battery. And as I said earlier, you need to be pretty quick because you don't want to heat the battery up, but you do need to get the top of the area hot enough to melt the solder. So it's a little tricky, but if you have a really strong iron, something really big with a nice big tip, you can do it relatively easy. And the other thing that you're going to want to do that's going to help you out a lot is to get a flux pen or a little bit of flux. I like these pens. I'll put a link down below on where I get them. I actually get them from Amazon. They're pretty cheap. Basically going to take the tip and just put a little bit right on the top like that. And you're going to take your iron and put a little bit of solder on top. We've got to be kind of quick about it. Okay. And then if I feel the top of this battery, it is still nice and cool. So it took a little longer than I wanted to, but there is a nice bead of solder on top and it's ready to solder wires. You can do the same to the other side and repeat it with all the rest of the batteries. So as you can see, I've managed to wire the batteries in, so to speak. I did have to use some wire because I did mess up my tabbing on the previous batteries trying to peel these off. Not a big deal, just use wire instead. And I have some open solder ends here. I was not able to get some heat shrink on them, so I'm going to use some of this um, liquid black tape or um, brush on electrical tape as it's called. Again, I'll put a link down below on where I buy this. It's very handy stuff. If you have a wire that you need to patch or seal and you don't want to use tape, it just does a great job. In this scenario, I really don't have a lot of room to wrap tape around these connections. I really don't think anything is going to move in here and short out, but just to be safe, we'll put some of this on there. Now there are a few other things that are worth mentioning, and one of them is some batteries have an over voltage protection and they have an under voltage protection built into them. And that is so you don't overcharge the batteries or undercharge the batteries because either one of those scenarios will ruin your battery. Now these were advertised that they did have that feature, but I'll be totally honest with you, at the price point of a buck and a quarter, I totally expect them not to have any circuitry of any type of protection in them at all. However, as you can see, it appears to work. I assume it's going to charge, and I'm just going to continue to use these batteries and see what happens. So if you don't see any other videos, it means that, uh, well, I got the garage on fire and the wife is pretty mad at me and, well, she probably won't let me do any more videos or um, you just haven't subscribed. So go ahead and subscribe, take a look at some of my other videos, and you might find something you yourself might want to build.